Have you ever played one of those video games where every time you die, you start the game over with everything completely changed? Like the enemies, maps, weapons, abilities, everything is different. Well, that's my life. My name is Benjamin Bowers, but you can just call me Benny. I have now died 26 times. I've drowned, I've been strangled, I've eaten bad sushi, I've been crushed by a steamroller, I've been let out of an airlock on a space cruiser, and I have been shot like six times. You'd think that I'd get discouraged by all this, but nah, I'm just trying to live my best life. Rogue Life, Episode 1, The Dame and the Detective. Ah, another day dawns in the city. A city full of crime. I thought this was a noir detective story. Cool, all right. So let's see. Everything's black and white. Hat is on the stand by the door. Collar is undone. Awesome. Gun is, ooh. (laughs) Gun is loaded. Yikes. Desk drawer is full of Booze. Very nice. Now most people walk right by this stingy office, never noticing the name on the door. Here's where I get to find out my cliche detective name. Drake Clues, Private Eye. Called it! <laughs> and there's the name tag. C-L-E-W-E-S. Oh, Clues. That's cute. I'm a gruff and grizzled guy who knows how to handle a six-shooter as well as a bourbon bottle. Today, I'd use both. Man, I gotta say that I really like my manly narrator voice. (sighs) Okay, Um, so hey, whoever's in charge, I already did the whole detective thing. I mean, I was straight up Sherlock Holmes for 36 hours. I fell into the Thames and drowned at the end of a thrilling boat chase somewhere between Westminster and Waterloo Bridge. Watson cried and everything. I mean, don't get me wrong, it was awesome and all that. I I was just kind of hoping for something a little bit different than the whole detective thing. I mean, yeah, the black and white is a nice change of pace, sure, but I feel like I've done this one. You just can't surprise me. Let me guess. I just sit here until I hear the inevitable next narration. He knew she was trouble the minute she walked in through his door. I knew she was trouble the minute she walked through the door. Two for two. I am nailing it this time. The dame was a tall glass of water, curves in all the right places, long blonde hair, and a mischievous scar over her left eye. Why, hello, Mr. Clues. I have a problem, and I heard that you're the best detective in town. Is that right? Here, I thought I was just a customer service agent. Well, and a constant disappointment to my mother and my ex-wife, but whatever. Um, you are? I'm Miss Jem Fatale. Ooh, credits to the writing team on that one. And my sister has been missing for two days. And naturally, you came to me. Because the police couldn't help you. The police, they say they have no leads. They think she's just left town, but I know she was taken. There is no one else I can turn to. Well, let me just take a little gander to see what town we're working with here. Ah, the Golden Gate Bridge. Get to go local this time. Neat! Ah, You have come to the right place, miss. I am the best dang private eye in town, and I am gonna find your lost kitten. Sister. Ah, right, right, right. Yeah, that's what I meant. Sister. Tell him to set an extra place for dinner tonight. Cause detective, uh, detective. Clues. Clues, clues, yeah, yeah, that's me. Detective Clues is on the case. I knew she was trouble, but how could I say no? I've never been one to turn down a beautiful face. Um, uh, and I wasn't gonna start now. 
I was beginning to appreciate how attractive my new client was. Hey, yeah, voice over me. Can, can, can we skip this? Look, miss, I'm gonna level with you. I'm not, <sighs> how should I put this? This isn't, okay, I'll just come out and say it. I am pretty sure that we're all just stuck in a video game. Skip what, Mr. Clues? I haven't even heard a question. Only saw the lips move, the eyelashes flutter, and my imagination took it from there. Uh, can you hear any of this? Hear what, Mr. Clues? One of these days, I tell you, dames were gonna be the death of me. <laughs> D don't worry about it. <laughs> Let's just get over to your sister's place and look for clues. And that's the last time I saw Dolly. We were supposed to have coffee the next morning. I see. Oh, look! It's Rick! The elevator operator? Yeah! You see, I see Rick in every loop. He's a great guy. He's, he's always someone different, though. He was a combat medic in my platoon once. Uh, he was a chef. He was my nosy next-door neighbor. He was an engineer on a spaceship. I mean, he fixed our engine and saved the day. He's really... Uh, I, um, I mean, um, we go to the same barber. You're very odd, Mr. Clues. Good morning, folks. All aboard. Rick! How you doing, pal? I'm very sorry, sir. It's Richard. Classic Rick. Fourteenth floor, please. Of course, miss. So, Rick. Richard. Oh, come on, buddy. We go way back. It's me, Benny, from 5C. My building only has three stories, sir. No, no, no. I mean, we were neighbors, but it was like the late 60s. You and your wife brought over some of that jello salad. Uh oh. Is is this normal? It hasn't happened to me before in her building. And her place is on the next floor. Yes, I thought we were there when the elevator stopped. Guess we're on the floor below. I used to live in an old building like this once. L let's try something. Maybe we'll be lucky and can climb out. Let me check. Yep, okay, look. We can get out up here. Just gotta climb up to the next floor and then take the stairs. Ugh. Oh, Mr. Clues, are you all right? Sorry. Ugh. The last loop, I was a free runner and I could parkour myself up there. You know, go all mirror's edge with it. Man, do I miss that speed and balance. Almost makes me willing to try to, you know, work out after all this. Look, I'm just saying parkour is just rad. What's that? Oh, never mind. Just slide me that bench. I'll go out there first and help you up. There we go. Ah. Richard, are you coming? As the captain of this vessel, I must go down with the ship. It's been an honor serving with you, sir. Classic, Rick. Uh, okay, there you go, Jem. Thank you, Mr. Clues. Her tone let me know that this would be a moment for the truth. The whole truth. You got it, uh, doll. Hey, look, would you mind if we just dispense with the Mr. Clues thing and maybe you can just call me Benny. Mr. Clues sounds, I don't know, silly to me. All right. If you say so, Benny. Also, oh, can you can you give me a minute? Sorry. Apparently this body is almost as out of shape as my real one. Why sure, Benny. Thanks. Oh, gosh. <sighs> Look, I guess I should say I'm sorry if I seemed a bit off earlier. I just I just don't know what's going on with my life. It's it's tough to explain, but I'm starting to think that none of any of this is real. What do you mean? Look, as far as I know, it should be the year 2022. 
I should be living in San Jose and working for a video game company called Reset Button. What's a video game? I feel just like I'm talking to my ex-wife. What's a video game? Okay, let's see. The 30s, so, um, do you know, was it around? Maybe Monopoly? Why, yes. Dolly and I would play it growing up. It would always end in a fight. Well, some things never change. Okay, so imagine Monopoly, but like on a movie screen. Like you are playing the game, but it is making the movie change, huh? That makes no sense, Mr. Clue. <laughs> Sorry, Benny. So I'm sure that a smart, strong man like you is at the top of the company, right? <laughs> well, not exactly. I'm in customer service. But you are better than that, I'm sure. Meh. Anywho, that was my old life. I've been stuck here for what feels like months, going through different loops and cycles, dying over and over and over. And at first, you know, it, it was fun. It was fun. And some loops have genuinely been exciting, but I've just never liked film noir. I mean, no offense. I sincerely don't understand anything you're saying, Benny. Uh, you know, I just thought that I would have figured something out by now, like... But here I am, I'm just in a black and white hallway with a beautiful woman, winded from a three foot climb. Beautiful, huh? Well, of all the black and white dames and all the secluded hallways in all the world, I've got to say you are by far the hottest tamale I could be with. <laughs> Benny, do you smell gasoline? Gasoline? No, I... Wait. I hear voices up above that seem to be up to no good. Dolly! Her room is right above us. Well, let's just peek first. Why? Well, little lady, this is usually the part of my day that gets... Hey, Dan, why is the boss wanting us to pour the gas for? Quiet, Francis. Now we're going to light this place up like the Rockefeller Christmas tree, see? Blow up all the evidence. Uh, but this this stuff's all wet, Dan. Wet stops the fires. Wet and hot don't uh, mix good. But look, look. Well, you try to pour some directly on the fire, then you see what happens, Francis. <laughs> Uh, the boss don't want me to pour it on the fire, Dan. He told me that a lot back at the base. Shh, 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 shh. Don't talk about the base or the boss, Francis. You never know who might be listening. Don't worry, Dan. Uh, nobody's going to figure out that we took the nice lady to the abandoned warehouse by the docks. Bingo. As I looked in at the two gangsters, my thoughts focused in on how I could defeat them, save Jem's sister, and live out my life on some beach with Jem. Shut up, narrator me! Typically, dames never threw me off my game, but this Jem Fatale with her dangerous hips, long golden locks, and legs for days had me feeling woozy. Stop the freaking internal monologue! He's the kind of dame that could make a man forget all his troubles in a way that was much more fun than a boss. SHUT UP! Wait, who was that? Francis, out the window. I got the match. Not so fast. Oh, okay. Maybe exactly that fast. Miss Fatal, make for the stairs, quickly. In these heels? Hey, it worked in Jurassic World. Okay, fine. Take him off! Quick! To the stairs! Oh, what's that sound? Explosion! Look, I just hope that your sister wasn't planning to get her security deposit back. Dolly's apartment! Oh no! Did you get her out? Oh, relax, relax. She wasn't there. But I know where they took her. I need to get to the docks. You mean, we need to get to the docks, right? <sighs> Listen, doll. These guys 
are dangerous. And I just can't stand the thought of what they might do to that pretty face of yours. Stay safe. I'll get Dolly. Gee, mister, if you do, I'll be ever so grateful. And, as a lady, it would be my obligation to show you that gratitude. Well, madam, that'd be swell. Look, head back to my office. Stay safe. I'll call you when I know that we're in the clear. Thanks, Benny. I'll be waiting. I have got to make it through this one. Okay. Got to get to the docks before I get caught up in too many questions here. Man, that is just the best part of this place. Zero traffic. Just a little bit of transition music, small cutscene, and I'm right where I need to go. The docks. And that mysterious building with the light flickering in the front must be the warehouse. You know, it's very on brand. So let's do this. Ooh, oh, something, something seems off about that dock over there. Like, getting closer to it is making me actually feel a little nauseous. That's weird. Uh, better steer clear. Here we go. As I walked to the docks, I kept getting this funny feeling. This warehouse wasn't your typical warehouse. Much more musical than you'd expect. Wait. A speakeasy? Ah, not quite what I expected, but I could use a drink. Password. My mind raced as I thought what the password could be. I was never really adept at puzzles, but Miss Vitale was counting on me. Um, okay, uh, let me think. 30s, dealing with noir here, um... Maltese Falcon. No. Uh, Clark Gable. Rosebud. Casablanca. FDR. Shirley Temple. The 18th Amendment. Um, Shirley Temple, but the drink? I don't know. Errol Flynn? You may enter. Really? <laughs> Errol Flynn. Must be a big swashbuckler fan. This guy was on to us, boss. But we blew up the apartment real good. Yeah, uh, yeah, boss. Made all the pretty lights. No way that detective survived. Then someone call the Ghostbusters, folks. Cause I'm alive and kicking. Now, where's Dolly? My, my, Mr. Clues, you found us. Ricky, you're the one behind this? Once again, my name is Richard. Why, so it is, Rick. Look, 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 j just give me Dolly and I'll get out of your hair. Don't worry, Mr. Clues. She's right over there, out drinking my lieutenants and having the time of her life. Her life? That will be much longer than yours, I'm afraid. 
The dame, this Dolly, looked awfully familiar. Wait. What's what's going on here? Is, L- Lauren? Lauren, what are you... What is... <laughs> Oops, guess neither of you was safe. Dan and Francis, take care of the bodies and turn that music back up. Rogue Life is written by Brady Flanagan and John Crowder. Directed and edited by Brady Flanagan. Original music by Brady Flanagan and Willis Kramer. Starring Brady Flanagan, Megan Sticht, Anthony Lovato, Michelle Gardner, John Crowder, Jason Wilde, Bob Bedore, Casey Wayman, Kevin Buckner, Melinda Yeaman, Caleb Berger, Becky Haney, Tyler Clausen, Tony Soriano, Brooks Bedore, narrated by Sarah Swenson and Nick Tanner. Sound effects by Shalise Craig, art by Blake Haywood, beta readers Mary Knowles, John Marucci and Matt Foley. Story consultants, Stephen Bradford and Kevin Buckner.